Hey guys, it's Steve with Rescape. Today is not going to be a GG story time. Today is a me story time. It's not really my testimony, but I'm driving home from work today and I'm thinking to myself, and I'm thinking tonight, I'm gonna do some things today, such that it seems to be, if tonight, if today's not the chapter, the ending of a chapter of my life, it will be soon. And what's happening here is that for you, those of you who don't know, on in December 2007, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Um, I had a hypomanic state, almost killed myself, probably almost killed myself twice since then, early on, getting my medicines managed. Um, it was pretty severe. It was a lot worse than what most people would think of being manic and bipolar disorder. Because there are, I, believe, I believe there's other things going on too. But what happened after that, um, well, let me back up. Okay, let me f continue from there. So what happened after that was that, um, like, I would try. Luckily, that was the the December after I graduated from college. If that happened any other December before, then I never would have graduated from college. Because after the fact, I would try to do, like, online courses and fail. A lot of things, I remember thinking to myself, I could barely take care of my cat, at the, you know, that I had later on. How am I supposed to take care of, you know, have a family if I can't even take care of my cat? Um, the idea of you know, getting a good job, just completely, or a relationship or anything, um, I was really stuck, and I didn't know why. I wasn't, I wasn't dumb, um, and it wasn't even that I wasn't unmotivated, but literally the part of my brain that had to put pieces of things together to accomplish long-term tasks and goals and things like that just wasn't working anymore. So there's that, which eventually led over the years into alcoholism, addiction to video games, pornography, and it kind of went from there. So basically, I'm stuck in this little tiny world where it's just me and whatever video game I'm playing and I'm drunk and I hate myself and I don't want to be that way, but that's just the way that I am and I can't figure out how to get out of it. So there's that. And and it brings to mind just the me meaningness of life because in that place, I look into the future, 10, 20, 50 years, and all I see is just more of the same of just living a really sad, lonely life that accomplishes nothing, that amounts to nothing, and then I die. And so the one remaining fear, not dying, but living a life and not having accomplished anything or done anything significant. Now, it wasn't just at that point in time that I thought of that. Even as far back as the beginning of high school, I started to begin to understand the meaningness of life and how everything was just worthless and stupid and nothing really mattered. And so it was sort of like the existential crisis thing people have halfway through the life that I had, you know, my sophomore year of high school. And then if you don't know Frederick Nietzsche or nihilism, the philosophy of nihilism, um, you can go check that out. It's basically everything's meaningless because no matter what you do, it's all undone. Eventually everyone will forget about it. And then so nothing matters. So, okay. So I'm dealing with that even before this happens, but then I'm out of college and, you know, I was supposed to be doing great things with my life. I ended up being stuck doing nothing for years and uh and just the hopelessness of that now where the story time comes into play is eventually i did find something uh and as crazy as it sounds i think it started out i was getting my meds at a walgreens and i walk outside and there's this guy with his wife and his kid in a car and they're out of gas and they're out of money and so i just give him a 20 dollar bill i actually told him i don't have anything which is true but I can tell by the way that when I said no, that he wasn't a bum. He actually looked like, cause bums ask people for money all the time. It doesn't bother them, but he looked like, like guilt stricken that he had to even ask me that. So I go back inside, pay like three bucks for a 20 out of an 18 machine and give it to him. And he starts crying and hugging me or whatever. And so there's that. Now, the next thing that happens, I go home that night and send out a bunch of emails, one of which is to my current teacher who, cause at the time I just started being able to make an energy ball. I did Tai Chi enough learning from my, original teacher when I was 17 up until at this point I'm 27 can make an energy ball from just doing you know tai chi whatever moves over and over and over again for years and finally something happens and my arms start moving a little bit on their own and I feel the ball and I think it's in my head but I compare it show it you know make a joke to one of my friends at the time and then she can feel it too and uh so I know it's something special and so that's why I sent out the emails and then my teacher says he's doing an energy healing seminar and that's in April I think it was like January or February when I sent out the email. And it's a long story how that works because the seminar was $650 and I was broke. And somehow I got like, it was on a it's Friday, Friday through Sunday. And the Wednesday before the Friday, there was a boat trip at my company and I won the grand prize of an iPad that was like $500. So I got in and I signed up. I gave a deposit $150 to get a discount of the seminar, not knowing where I was gonna get the rest of the money. 
and then literally with two days left, I got that and then got in. So from the very beginning, I, another thing too, having depression and bipolar disorder, I don't look forward to anything. So, and I was looking forward to this seminar for no reason at all. And the idea of being able to make an energy ball and moving energy and working with energy, even before I could do it was a huge thing for me. So big that I thought everybody else would like it too if they were introduced to the possibility, which later on crushed me and I found out nobody cared. But that's, you know, a different story. Anyway, so I've got this energy ball. And so then I'm just expecting the money to come somehow because I'm in that place now. And then that happens. And so first thing I do when I get to the sky, I'm all chips down. I'm like, hey, I got bipolar disorder. If that disqualifies me, I'll leave right now. And he didn't like approve it, but he didn't kick me out. So I was like, okay. And I go from there, and at this point, this is the beginning of my way out, but I still don't know what's going on. So I do the seminar, can't do the energy healing very well at this point, if at all, I have trouble feeling anything. Um, get talked into taking Tai Chi lessons at the time. And, but eventually just doing the Qigong work every day, at this point, three, four, five times a day, like during lunch, both my breaks and whatever, I was pretty fanatical about it. And I was just opening up all the meridian channels, whatever, in my body. And I don't know how to say it, but like one of the things I noticed is it didn't rain while I was outside from April until like July. It would rain, you know, it would rain during the day, but whenever I was outside, it wouldn't rain until like one day I went outside and it was raining like in the end of July. So all of April, May and June and most of July, it wouldn't rain while I was going outside. So things like that would just catch my eye and sort of like just the idea that I'm on the right path. And it's something I enjoyed to do. And I, and at this point, I still I didn't even consider the fact that I could actually help me get out of the fact that I did nothing with my life. It's just something I enjoyed to do as my, you know, passion or whatever. The end of 2013 and we went to, I went to a Christmas party that we do, that my school has every, you know, middle of December every year. And a guy there, one of the senior students named Ben told me his, story about how the Tibetan monks had this uh, school um, of Tibetan monks where there's a three out of four chance, or no, 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 it was one out of four chance that if you did this, you'd go insane and then they'd have to keep you locked up in there because they couldn't let you out. So it's dangerous, but it accelerates you really fast. And I was thinking to myself in 2007, how that almost happened to me. So I was like, well, where's this training or whatever? And he's like, oh, it's in the mind body spirit program. But in their program, they do make sure it goes really slowly over the course of time of years to give your brain time to adapt. And so I asked my teacher and he tells me to send him an email later on because he's questioning like whether or not I really want to do this because he couldn't figure out why I would want to do this because normally this is something you're invited into and it's just something I heard about. And I let him know about all my symptoms and my situation. So he takes me in sort of like a trial run. I didn't know the time it was a trial run, but I just thought it was like, well, because to me, it was just sort of the same idea how I do energy work five times a day and it doesn't rain. And so it's just sort of like I have this or like how I knew the money would be there. And so I was sort of like, aha, I knew I needed to do this program. It's my body spirit program. And, uh, and it's a long story, but basically by the end of that, the April, the year, um, the anniversary of the, the energy healing seminar, the one in April of 2014, um, I learned one of the things you have to do is make an energy ball. And then everyone talks about what their quality of energy ball is. And mine in April of 2014 was void. It was less than empty. And I found out that I, in 2007 had entered void state inadvertently and how that fucked fucked me up pretty bad and then thankfully my teacher who had experience with void state was able to walk me out of it in the in the seminar holding a void ball he showed me how to make it magnetic and then instantly a lot of my symptoms went away completely instantly and whenever I started getting them back again I'd be like I'd make my ball sure enough it was void state I'd turn it back magnetic and I'd be okay and that was the beginning so that was the beginning of me healing and then the mind body spirit program that was him taking me into the program now as a trial run but as like a real thing at that point and so from april of 2014 a lot of stuff reset spiritually in my life and then that's when my real training began and this when i really had the understanding that i was going to get out of this like i don't know how long it could take years it could take decades it doesn't matter i'm putting everything in all chips in on this program because i know this is my way out so because one of the things you have to think about either if 
more likely than not, if you're just born in this world and aren't told anything, and you sort of observe it for how it is, at least for how most people view it is, life is meaningless. Like people talk about God that happens to be invisible. Like if, if there's something like a God existed, why would he be invisible? It doesn't even make sense. It should be the opposite of invisible. It should be completely obvious based off all these characteristics. And the fact that bad things happen in the world, it's completely obvious that God doesn't exist that way. And it's just like, and then the people that claim to know God aren't any different than the people that don't know God. And then you go to like churches and they're just talking. And so there's no evidence there. And the people that actually do study and explore the world, like the scientists that can demonstrate their power with immense complex levels of technology will say themselves that they haven't found any evidence for the existence of God, if they're honest. And so, so the question then becomes, A, life is meaningless, or logically you can conclude that life is, there is a God and life does have meaning, but nobody knows about it. And even the people that say they know about it don't know about it because if they really did, then they'd be living life differently. And if there are people that know, then you wouldn't have heard about them because then it would be obvious like, hey, look at those people, what's up with them? And then it'd be public and they'd be on news and everybody would be talking about it, but nobody talks about it. So large part of this program, Mind Body Spirit program, my teacher and the guy who was the only other guy who was taking the program because it's such a ridiculously difficult program they'd say it separates the boys from the men and the reason is is because if you're not absolute about it you're gonna along the way you're gonna come across something that you're just not gonna you just choose not to take the program anymore nobody's forced out but everybody quits because they always come across something and and so going through this program and all the times that you would think it would be logical to quit why don't you quit and this is it I don't find God or pursue God based off belief or faith. I pursue God based off logic. And the logic is, A, there's no meaning for existence. Life is futile. You, I might as well be drunk looking at porn, playing video games at a computer because it really doesn't give a fuck. 100 years, nobody will, that ever knew me will, will remember. Or B, there is a reason and there can be a peace and a joy and a meaning in life that lasts, but nobody knows about it. So <clears throat> logically... If either one being true, you can't know which one's true beforehand. Logically, I'm going to choose the one where there might be meaning, even if it's a lot likelier chance that there's not, because if I choose the one where there might be meaning and don't find it, well, I've lost nothing because life's meaningless anyway. So that's the beginning. Beginning number one, logically choose the outcome that you think would be the better outcome. Now, in the Mind Body Spirit program, when I'm going through the program and I'm trapped because of my bipolar disorder, and one that's the main reason I stuck around so long. If I was, if I hadn't had bipolar disorder, I would have, you know, quit and done random shit for no reason, like you know most people would do. But because I had nothing going for me anyway, the program really was my one and only ticket out. And um, and every time I thought about quitting, I was like, well, this might lead to something, or I definitely know quitting will lead to nothing. So even if I thought there was just a slight potential possible chance that staying in the program would lead somewhere, I just stayed in the program because there was just nothing else. I think that's one of the reasons Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit for there's the kingdom of heaven. It's because literally, if you're not poor in spirit, you're not gonna stick around long enough to find out. So, so literally years of this, like this is really, it's really, it's a really hard program and it doesn't get easier. It, you'll get times where you'll think it'll get easier just to give you a, a point of relaxation and it gets hard again. I've not had a year since 2013 where I can say this is an easy year. Like every year has been difficult one way or another. And uh, and not even for physical reasons, it's always spiritual. Cause in my body spirit program, like you grow spiritually, like that's the whole point of it. And physically and mentally, but when you suffer in this program, it's, it's rarely physical, it's gonna be. And then when you try to relate to people what's going on, you can't because it's a spiritual thing. And so if you try to put it into words, there just aren't words to describe it. And then when you think about it, it makes sense. But then when you actually try to say it, it's just not there. So, so it's not even something you can share with anyone. You really just have to talk with God to do this. And the point of this program is today, today I think I'm ready to actually not, to actually do something with my life. Like believe it or not, it takes how many, six, seven years or six years in the program, and that's how long it took in this program to get me to a point where I can actually do something like a normal human being. Like I can actually go, if I wanted to, I could get a girlfriend now. If I wanted to, I could go, I could go back to school and do what I want. I could get a, a good job if I wanted to now. 
So all, all those years ago when I was drunk in my playing video games and hating myself, I'm now here now saying that I'm done with that. And, and it's not based off the goodness in my heart. It's not based off faith. It's not based off the love of God. It's literally pure mental Vulcan logic that on one end, you, there's nothing. And on the other end, there might be something but it would mean that everything's fucked up and you have to admit that and do it anyway. And so I had to, I had to take the choice and, and put everything perfectly in its place that if God exists, all these other things have to be true. And if they're all true, then this world is fucked and people in this world are just fucked up and everything about anything in this world, like just covers, covers the truth of God, because if it didn't, everybody would know. And if people don't know, then something else is going on. And this isn't a belief system. This is just logic. If you're going to conclude that God exists, you have to conclude all these other things. And then also the thing that it's, it's worth pursuing. So, so here I am now. Um, and I'll look forward to seeing where I could go in the future. So this is Steve. I don't know what I'm going to title this, but, um, here's to being unstuck.